Hello, welcome to I mean, wait. Let me just take some water because that was blockbuster at the Stanford Bridge. I know for Chelsea fans, they'll be excited that Chelsea have gone on to get a draw in this game. For Liverpool fans, also, um, I also know that they are going to be excited because. Stafford Bridge isn't an easy place to go. Forget about where Chelsea finished last season. Um, given what Mauricio Pochettino has done to this team, you were expecting that it was going to be a difficult game for them. And, and, and it was, and it was, and it was. You give them all the credit. So, guys, thank you very much once again. It is uh, me, Fifi Manfred, Fifi, at Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Um, so is the counter press. Thank you very much for choosing us. Please, do all to turn on the notification button after subscribing. Do what to share and like as well. When you turn the notification button, choose all. So that all the tactical analysis, um, post and pre-match analysis, with a betting odds, are going to get them. Because we predicted this game here on the counter press. That was going to be a draw. And you have it. It's a draw. So do what to turn the notification bell on. Select all. You get all the pre- and post-match analysis for all the games. And you get it here best. Now let's get straight into it. For contest sake, these two clubs were fighting over Moises Caicedo in preseason, not in preseason, just a few days ago, a few hours ago. Now, um, Liverpool did put in a bid. Um, they decided not to pull out the bid after Caicedo was on a Kivio call and said he wanted Chelsea Football Club. Um, after all of that has been done, Liverpool have still decided not to pull out the bid. Chelsea have gone into um, putting a bid for Southampton's Romeo Lavia. Um, a player that Liverpool had courted for a better part of the of, of, of preseason. I mean, Chelsea too. Um, there are reports that Southampton have agreed a fee. There are reports that Lavia has some issues. I mean, all of these things are going to come down to the Chelsea wanted to get Moses Caicedo at Stamford Bridge today for this game. But of course, that wasn't going to happen given the time frame. Latest reports from Paul Joyce, who is a pro Liverpool reporter, and of course, Tom Cook, um, Adams Cook. Um, is that Chelsea are getting close to agreeing a fee Brighton on Hove. And that was a standing block. Once Chelsea are able to get over that, of course, it means that Moses Caicedo is going to be in already. Fabrizio had reported that eight years plus one um, on the player side had been agreed by Chelsea Football Club. So yes, be, when the game started actually at Stamford Bridge, just before the proper football, there was a part where Todd Bowley was in the stands and then um, the leaders of the FSG were also in the other stand. You could sense the tension over there. They were not close to each other, but I could see that they want to win on and off the pitch. And these people are businessmen. You can understand why one will go behind the other to want to get an advantage and all of those things. It's business. And these both of them are also Americans invested in the UK. You understand that these things are going to happen. Now, let's go into the post-match analysis proper, tactical analysis proper. But do want to subscribe, turn the notification button, and then select all. So, yes, Chelsea went into this game per report. Chelsea wanted to go, but Chelsea wanted to go into this game in a 4 2 3 one um, just when the Liverpool lineup did come, he switched it from a 4 2 3 1 to a 3 5 2 sort of shape. Now, in the regular 4 2 3 1 initially that he changed from, um, there was Mihailo Modric that was starting. Modric was starting ahead, it was a back four with Corwell, Thiago Silva, then Ben Chiwo, and then of course, um, on the left hand side. There was also uh, on the left hand side Ben Cho, on the right hand side with James. Then there were supposed to be two sitting midfielders, Inezo Fernandez and Conor Gallagher, number 10 in Chuku and Mecca. Then you get on both sides, Modric Sterling. Then um, right ahead of um, of them, you're going to get my man, Nicholas Jackson. But just when the Liverpool lineup came, which is a 4 3 3 leader, was, I was surprised. First, let's talk about Liverpool. Liverpool needs Moises Caicedo. I mean, he's going to fit seamlessly into that team because he has played Enzo Fernand, um, Alexis McAllister, Brighton and Hover Beyond. He's wonderful in that regard. They know themselves. They know how to play with each other. So you expect that when he comes into the team, they're going to play well. In this game, however, it was a 4-3-3 with Alexis McAllister as the pivot. I was expecting a double pivot with Curtis Jones. I didn't get that. It was Alexis McAllister in there. Whilst he had White on top of him, Cody Gapo, and then Dominico Shobosla as a two attacking number eight hugely attacking no sense of defensive contribution yes of course on the board we're going to come inverted with Trent alexander arnold with McAllister, so that um cody gapo and then um dominico shobosla will push up then they're going to get a five man up top 
across the back line with um Ruben Diaz, Yogo Zota, Salah, Nunez, um, no, Gapo, and then um, Alexis um, Dominico Shobosla. Now, that is the Liverpool plan. So once Mauricio Pochettino saw that, he said, no, we do not have the base to get down with this. Maybe our counter person isn't even the best. Now, we have also players that have not played together for a very long time. To get this done, let us try to be much more compact, build the three at the back, and then get the job done. It's going to be a way we can play through them. In the first 30 minutes of the game, 15 to 30 minutes of the game, you could tell that Chelsea were not up to speed because they had not trained for this Liverpool ship. They were not expecting Liverpool to come full attacking on them. They wanted to press some people. And you could tell, there were times where Kani Chuku and Mecca, who was not supposed to press either of Ibu Konati or Virgil van Dijk, went ahead pressing. And once he pressed, there was always a hole in the middle of the pack. That's exactly how Dominico Sobostai found Alexis, um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. And he played through Mohamed Salah um for that for that for that for that goal that was disallowed it is a liverpool trades once they realized that chelsea were short in midfield now let's bombard them in the middle of the pack with huge and very good attacking qualities that we had and that's exactly how liverpool did play now once the game did wear on chelsea had a new plan do not press the center backs again come and sit in compact allow kunati to have the ball allow virgil van dyke to have the ball when they do just the trigger should be Alexis McAllister. Once the goal goes to him, then you press. Don't go and press the centre backs. Don't press Allison. So it was straight instruction from um Mauricio Pochettino around the twenty something minutes, and you could see it come together. Now Chelsea had settled in. If you watch how Chelsea played in in preseason, there was two um principles majorly: the tilt dimension and then um, the overload to isolate. It's simple. Chelsea were overloading every time the right-hand side where regimes was. So you're going to always see a combination play of regimes. You are going to see Enzo Fernandez come up there at some point in time, Kani Chikwemeka and Raheem Sterling. Then in the box, you're going to get people to attack those areas. Chelsea needed that. They realized that we have to overload one part of the game. Again, they wanted to force Luis Diaz back so that his attacking exploits will not be seen. Now, that had a positive and a negative. The positive was that Chelsea obviously had a lot of successes in those areas. Because, of course, Luis Diaz is not the best. Chelsea overloading them. And then, um, they also had to keep an eye on somebody that has been isolated, which was Ben Chihuahua, on the other hand of the field. The negative was that, I have a feeling that in the beginning of the game, the Sassi wasn't told so much about Diaz. Or maybe he had not watched him so well. So, anytime Chelsea was supposed to get back, regime sometimes was late. And it was supposed to be a 1v1 with Diaz. That's, that shouldn't have been a problem, actually. Because if you have big, if you have very good wingers, pacey, and then you have a best of pace and they are very aggressive, and you have a center back also like Diaz, who's big, bulky, very good in defending 1v1s, it should not be a big deal. But I'm, I'm sure that he underestimated the trickery of Diaz, and he got the better of him. That actually led to the goal. He was at his blind side, Reese failed to, to, to cover, and that was it because Chelsea overloading those areas. It led pieces. Now, when Chelsea realized that they were being pressed very well, compassed well, they were simple. Trent was always going to come inverted. So anytime Trent came inverted, Chelsea's plan was simple. Via Levi Kowal, via De Sassi, and then, of course, Thiago Silva, who are all impeccable on the ball. They were going long into those channels, the channels left behind by Robo, and most especially Trent Alexander-Arnold. It created very good openings. In fact, in the lead-up to that corner kick, it was those plays that got that job down. Now, Conor Gallagher had issues in, in build-up, and he, that's not Connor's very good trait. In the last game against Fulham, he was good. But in this game, he was targeted. And Jorgen Klopp, you could tell, had worked on his players for that particular plan to target Conor Gallagher because he wasn't so comfortable. If you go hard on him, he's going to have issues. He's a runner. Off the ball, he was exciting. But on the ball, he didn't give himself to so much. And that's exactly why Enzo Fernandez, while he had to do a lot of attacking play, also had to drop into the middle of the pitch to help him build up. So... From the 25th minute of our Chelsea had a 3-2 phase of ball progression in the phase 1. And it helped a lot. Once that got done, either Chelsea just go straight to the right-hand side, overload those areas with his James. And then if Liverpool's attention got drawn to it, then they switched to Benjamin Chelo. So, yes, it started at a back three. But when Chelsea were building up, because they needed help, because Conor Gallagher wasn't their man, it was more like a back four. Rhys James wasn't deep. He was at the back. Then, on the other side, rather, you had, on the left-hand side, you had Levi Kowal playing more like a fullback. The Sassi and then Thiago Silva as the two centre-backs. Then regimes as a fullback. Not going too deep, it was like mid. 
in the central area waiting for those bus to come because if you were being present in central areas they wanted that option as an outlet and robert sanchez will clip those balls sometimes was successful sometimes it wasn't to reach james which was good so the build-up was okay again when they grew into the game the combination play was coming with carnage to come kinds of friends as you could tell the confidence in those areas you can tell from um, um, um nicholas jackson as well and you could tell that just were sensing blood in the water to go now in my roundup of all of these things, the bigger issue was that Chelsea could not find the final pass, the final decision. You can catch them some slack because um, it's a new team, it's the first goal in the English Premier League game when Mihailo Modric did come on, was brilliant. In the second half, where Liverpool, on the other hand, wanted to play in a 4 3 3. But in that 4 3 3, Trent Alexander Arnold was going to come inverted and play as a double six, a deep line playmaker um, with Alexis McAllister. That gave them some compactness with three at the back, whilst Rubo was the deepest of the full backs. Then um, Diaz will cut inside and come in onto a front three. Then you are going to have Cody Gapu, um, Dominico Shobo slide forming a front five, sort of. So it was front six actually because it was Robertson, it was Diaz, it was Cody Gapu, it was Shobo Sly, it was um, Salah, and then Diogo Jata, six in front. Now Chelsea were smart in the second half, they knew there was no point pressing. The center backs again so can you quick make there's a picture that will be showing where he stays off pressing the center backs he just concentrates on pressing the middle of the pack just focus on analysis my so like i said earlier and that's what chelsea prevented chelsea, liverpool from building up constantly chelsea had most parts of the ball you could also tell that chelsea were much more fitter in this game yes in the second half they made some very good changes the button curtains just gets the double people that i was expecting to start now liverpool you could tell that club was sensing that okay i need to be careful i need to manage the game now if i get a goal i'll be good then brought in darwin Nunez to be able to run those channels and then pounce on those balls when they fall to him they did i bet he didn't get the goal so it was tactical mastermind from mauricio pochettino adjusting in game the in-game tweak of not pressing the center backs was so important and i think that's how chelsea got the foothold of the game liverpool was good again and then chelsea were good and i think at the end of the day a draw for both teams is, 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 is fair. I'll be Chelsea deserved much more to win. Now, um, they'll go back to try and get either Carcedo or Lavia. Um, I know Chelsea are close to getting Romeo Lavia. And yeah, that's it. It's, 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 it's fair for Chelsea, given where they've come from. And if you're a Chelsea fan, maybe you have some, a lot of things to be excited about. If you're a Liverpool fan, you need a DM. Liverpool need, badly needs somebody who can play as a single six or a double six. Either Lavia or Carcedo. Most especially should be Caicedo, but it looks like Chelsea are closer to getting Caicedo and Romeo Lavia is in there too. So yeah, a beautiful game of football. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm sure you did too. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tactical analysis. My name is Sifi Manfred. It's Sifi Manfred on YouTube, like I always do. Adios. Do what to like, subscribe and share. Turn on.